2014? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many of you are for the first time? Okay, two, three, four, five. Okay, just five. This is my second or third, and I'm so excited to stand here because <coughs> till uh, last year I was sitting there and watching a uh, lot of sessions and gaining a lot of knowledge. So this time I, am, I got an opportunity uh, to come up with my personal experience report. Uh, we'll wait for another one more minute, maybe. Yep. I think we can go fine. So uh, uh, my name is Vinod uh, Purushottaman. I am working as technical architect uh, in Envisionet Inc. I'm traveling all the way from Trivandrum, Kerala. So uh, today I'm going to talk on huddles, the sprint with impediments on the way to automation. So this is a personal experience or what I have experienced with my couple of teams in in automating few things. So th this. Uh, this, this section comes under experience report category. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Agile India team to giving an opportunity like this to uh, share the experience report. And second, I would like to remember my Agile guru, Mr. Gunasundaram, who took me into uh, Agile stream and thoughts and, uh, and again, uh, like Venkat Subramaniam, a man who I admire a lot, uh, who inspired me a lot to speak. Uh, anybody identifies this person? Anyone? Very famous person. Yes? He's Thomas Alva Edison. Like what he has said, he has said like, uh, I have not failed, I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So I, I think he is the first agilist because agile uh, says the same thing, fail early, fail often. So uh, this, would, this would be the capital uh, to start with uh, automation. Uh, for, for my team also it was the uh, capital to start with automation. So when, when we talk about automation, it could be different automation units, like it could be build automation or deployment automation or database deployment automation or your testing automation. So when I, when I refer automation units here, I meant building blocks of automation units, not a continuous integration or continuous delivery. But eventually, when you work on different automation units, slowly you will keep on building one by one and you will reach continuous integration or continuous delivery in long time. So it, a background about my uh, team or the experience from where I am sharing this. Uh, this is uh, from a team of 20 to 25 uh, member size of SI systems. Uh, it's Chennai based uh, offshore development uh, team. We work with Java, ColdFusion, ASP.NET and SQL Server. We, we write a couple of uh, RESTful services to support certain client mobile applications as well. We have uh, three different uh, products which we, uh, which we uh, support, like one is SI Systems Public Website, Client Site, and Match Guide. Uh, these are the environments we had, like we have a development environments, collection of machines, and then we had QA, UAT, then production, and the production replica. So you know how much effort we took to push uh, codes to different environments. So these were the common challenges we were facing. One was like, we, we never had a good release team. Like, the developer plays the role of a release team. And every time we, we end up with a lot of problems. Like, um, always we miss us release timelines, and we used to push the code at the edge. Always, when the things are in developer hands, we used to make a lot of quick fixes and last minute code changes, which resulted in poor quality releases. And there were frequent pro post production. Uh, issues and which we have to sit late or we have to even spend our weekends to resolve all those issues and patch up and do things. Most of the time database configuration and uh, normal environment configuration was a real mess or problematic. 
So uh, a need for change was visible. Like everyone understand, like okay, that we we need to change. We have to implement something to get rid of the all these things. But nobody was listening to it, or the team members were not that keen to uh, like listening to this issue. Like th 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 each of the developers were aware of all these issues, but nobody was ready to go the extra mile to do something special to get rid of all these issues. Then we realized like we were dealing with the hardest thing in this universe. What is the hardest thing in this universe? And that is change. We know like to bring changes into the team or to bring changes into our, in our environment or culture is the most difficult part in this world. So I was also not uh, dealing anything bad. So even we know like we have, uh, like sometimes we have uh, personal uh, like characteristics which we, we would like to change, but we, we, we find hard time to change it. So uh, what Newton said was correct, like uh, everybody continue to persist in its state until it is compelled to change its state by a force impressed. So we, we know that. Uh, this is the case in our, our environment also. Like pe people will set up something and they don't want to change, they follow that continuously, whether it is a system or, or a production environment or, or they have uh, certain plans to do code pushes, they follow that. Even we are like that. Uh, for instance, I, I had a very uh, bad character, like I was short-tempered in, in my teenagers or early 20s. So I want to change that very, uh, very badly. But unfortunately, uh, like I was not able to change. I tried my level best, but I was not able to change. Suddenly I fell in love. I became very soft. I became very cool. So I, I thought, okay, fine. Uh, some, some change happened because of something. Uh, then I got married. I became short-tempered again. So what does that mean? That means there is an external force that impressed you, which made a change in you. Now the, now the force is bad or good, that you will know only after the marriage. That I don't know how to express this. This, this program is not live, right? So I can express. So like that, in, in, in the case of corporate also, the thing is not different. The only difference is it is not every body. It is everybody. Everybody in a firm continue in, in a particular state, and they don't want to change. What is the reason behind that? When, when it is a, a development environment or it's a production or anything, they set up a cart castle and they don't want to disturb that. Whenever we suggest some changes, they will, they, they're afraid. They're telling, okay, if we touch that, again, something is going to break. We don't want to change the process. Let it be like that. We will take the code manually. We will build it manually. We will push it using this way. We will push it using that way. We will continue what it is already in there. You don't believe I have experience with uh, one team which, uh, which build and deploy code manually from repository, and they don't even have a branching strategy. They take the code, they manually integrate that into folder structures, they build there, and they manually upload that in the FTPs and all, do, do all kind of mess. And this, was this process was implemented in early 2003. Now it is 11 years ahead, still they follow that. But they're telling like, we are comfortable with it. We don't want, that is the word. Everyone is comfortable what is going with. They don't want to move out of that comfortable zone. So keeping that in mind, we tried a different approach. Like we thought to bring changes in three uh, different mode. Like one is first move, and then the pace, and then the climax, which end up to uh, in a success. So what I have tried is I've read a book called uh, Switch, How to Change Things When Change is Really Hard. It was written by, uh, I think, Heath Brothers. So that book mentioned a lot of cool stuff which you can apply on your team uh, to make change happen or make things change. So we'll go one by one. Like first approach, you know, like whenever there is a first approach, whether it is in a game or whether it is in a strategy or whether it is in a change, it is going to be really, really hard. So. We want to make things very, very special, or we want to pull people in. So what was the first problem was, like, we know we need a change, but people was not listening to the change. So we want to make the pain evident. What was the problem? Among the team members, only one developer was assigned as the release engineer role, and none of else was bothered about it. So we thought to make the pain very evident. What we did is we tried to rotate the release engineer role among each developer. We trusted the developer. We never thought, okay, he is a super developer or star developer in the team. He should always do that, or he is talented, or he only knows about the environment. 
we never stick to those kind of uh, attachments. We thought to exchange the role and we pick each person every week. So wh why every week is like we want to cover uh, the, the span, the people in a very short span of time and we rotated the release engineer among all of them and eventually in weeks we were able to uh, make the pain evident in every team members and everyone come together and said like okay it, there is a problem in release, uh, releasing, we have to make some change. So next thing was like how to start with, like uh, how, how to win uh, the hurts of the management or how to win the, the confidence of the team. So whether it is money or whether it is time, we invest when we saw good return. So here also the thing was not different. So if we want to invest, we have to showcase something very, very interesting. So we tried to sell the best one. We identified what are the areas of uh, manual stuff going on here and we identified the best one to sell first. In, in, our, uh, in our environment, in our team, the most tedious job was to do the production release. So we, do, we thought to do uh, automation in that area and what we did is we picked that item and we automated it and we showcased it and everyone was really like welcoming it and appreciating it and everyone realized okay we can do that. If we can do that in production environment we can do that in other environment as well. It doesn't mean that it is complete end to end automation in production environment. It was just downloading a, a SIP or a package from FTP location and, and deploying it in somewhere. But same thing we can replicate in other environments plus additional stuff. So second one was limit the uh, automation work in progress. So the moment we started to think about automating, immediately a big product backlog pile up, right? Okay, you have to do that, you have to automate this. We know when we show something uh, to somebody, everyone will get over enthusiastic and people started doing things parallelly. So then what we thought was, okay, we should not do like that, we should keep uh, the the work in progress very limited. We don't want to rush through all the automation. So we did one by one. So we, we did a slow and steady pace, like we pick one by one and we keep on building each uh, manual jobs into automated mode. Second, uh, the second mode. So once we have done this, we were all set into like the momentum. Okay, everyone understand we have to automate. Uh, we started with one particular item, we know what are the areas we need to automate. So next we want to attain the pace. So you know it is very difficult. I, I, I have heard a saying like uh, every fool can uh, start a business but uh, very, uh, very few will sustain and get succeed in that business. Same thing here as well, like it is easy to talk about automation, it is easy to talk about test driven development or whatever it is. But to sustain it and to, to get succeed, that is the difficult part. So what we did is we want to get a collective ownership as a team like we, we are agile team, we, we are self-organized team so we want to make a collective ownership rather than assigning it to somebody and getting things done by individual peoples. What we thought is we come up as a team together, we sat together and we identified what are the items to be automated. We referred all the past retrospectives to see what are the missings. We know like whenever there is a problem people will blame each other or people put that on the table and discuss okay this, this problem was because of uh, the, the deployment was not proper or the build was not proper or the package was missing something or some database script was missing something. Like that we identified all the nodes from the past releases and then we identified a prod automation backlog which include all the items that need to be automated or that need to be uh, like um, changed. So. Uh, we try to identify all the manual and boring uh, jobs which need to be automated. Then what we did is rather than assigning again, rather than assigning it to somebody, we showcased that uh, in a retrospective, we showcased this product backlog to the team and we effectively utilized retrospective to communicate with people and with the team and they voluntarily came up because we have a self-organized team, they know what is the pain of doing release, so they came up and they started picking up item one by one and we progressed it. And next point we did is like we never uh, thought about uh, putting a fixed plan. We never thought about okay we will start in this month and in six months we will complete, uh, com we will do all the automation and we will make continuous integration or we will achieve continuous delivery. Because whenever we had some plan always he had other plans. He will always come up with uh, different uh, struggles and challenges to us. So what we thought is rather than going like that, we, we did a different approach. We became an ancient doctor rather than a modern doctor. You know what is the difference between that, right? Modern doctor like he depends upon the diagnostics report. 
but an asian doctor he depends upon like trial and error like how to do things like uh, try one if it is not working then move on to the other one like that he keep on doing trial and error and he succeeds in it so we focus on what works not what's the best always when we you talk, think about automation there are hundreds of tools available in in the market rather than getting a heavy duty heavy weight item and fit into your requirement you have to go for what works for you so next difficult uh, situation we were facing was like uh, our efforts these are the your efforts for like automating things you have to spend lot of time and you your business feels like this okay this is what you have done uh, the, the reason being the business don't feel the change suppose if you took uh, like one month to complete automate a production build and you did that what's the difference in the management or the business is going to see at the end they don't see any difference if you do it manually or if you do it through an automation tool at the end at the particular uh, deadline time they are going to get that items in the production environment right so they don't see any direct difference but definitely they will get benefited with indirect benefits like uh, you you are you are release readiness or how fast you are doing things so definitely that benefit will be there but there won't be any direct uh, involvement or direct uh, like benefit uh, that the business feels i would say like you should do it for the team not for the business because it's like how productive or how uh, effectively you can deliver some products to the business so, and the the different the another point is like you are you are delivering something you you have to maintain the quality as well so from these two aspect it is better that you do it for the team rather than doing it for the business but how we will get the time we will never get the time because business have already their own priorities and they want to complete it they never give you time to work on your items or your refactoring items but how how you will do that uh one one item is like we need to maintain all these things to get succeeded uh, in 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 the automation so the climax so we have to motivate the team members how you will motivate like one one thing we did was like we did a campaign like one of the problem we were facing was on a release date uh, the team was always getting late we push at the edge like at 5:30 or 6 o'clock then then after that we lot of post production issues will be coming in we sit late up to 10:30 or 1 so what we did is we did a like campaign like go home early on release day so that was a hit like uh, after all com completing the automation in 6 months or so people started going at 3:30 or 4 because we completed our production push at around 3 and there there was no production issues or sometimes one or two that we will do it very quickly and we can leave on that day so uh, the promise that we gave to the team that happened and we started going home early on the release dates and second thing is like uh, we have to cast right tools for the right problem again focus on what works not what's the best look for the tool which is suiting for you like we 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 were working on automating java dot net and lot of stuff we could have gone with a tool and we could have integrated that rather than we went we went with ant and n and script and we write our own scripts to fetch, to get to communicate with the source control server and get the source code and build it and natively we write the workflows that we have which suited us and the other one was like uh, we have to set clear directions to the team members like most of the time whenever we come up with a process or we whenever we come up with a change somebody will be there to break these things somebody will check in with builders that will break all others other code so we have to make sure that we are communicating very effectively with our team members there should be enough guidelines there should be enough training sessions going on there should be do's and don't do's so you have to communicate that with your team very effectively your communication should not be like this this is a, a like banner uh, i have seen in an atm like it is telling like that particular atm is for visually challenged and they are giving the instruction to the visually challenged person just plug in your headphone and hear what it is how a visually challenged person can see this it is not possible right so you should not communicate like this to your team members rather that you sh you should be very clear and very specific so you keep on building one by one like branching strategy or how you do the release emails you automate that as well uh, test automation build automation compiling the configuration changes or uh, how how will you do the deployment you keep on building one by one at one stage you will reach here you don't need to plan for continuous integration or you don't need to plan for continuous delivery you keep on building all 
as much as manual boring, uh, uh, manual efforts, and eventually you will reach here. So these are the technical details which I can rush through in two minutes. Like one issue we were facing was like there were no uh, like proper branching strategy which uh, which were like affecting us. So we introduced a new branching strategy and we kept it very simple. So you can refer uh, more on like internet to see what are the different branching strategies available and you can adopt adapt which suits you well. And we we gained more control over the changes and there were uh, no no more build or release issues. And another uh, technical detail is like database deployment. We know like this is a mess for most of the team members, how to do the database deployment. So initially we were trying to do it with Redgate comparing production and data dev database and getting the scripts and then executing that in different environments. So it was leading to a lot of problems. What we did is we come up with uh, a template driven structure where we trusted the developer, we trust, we empowered the developer to write the scripts, whether it is uh, alter statement, data definition languages, or like data manipulation languages, whatever it be. We trusted and empowered the developer, and they came up with their scripts associated with the uh, with the feature or change request, and they checked in along with their changes. So, which we picked up for using our tool, and we replicated it. So, the benefit was like in each environment, this change set was vetted, and at the end. It was perfect. Like there were no builder, there were no builders, or no stored procedure, or uh, database script changes was missing in the production. Another another one is like uh, compiling configuration changes from various change requests. What we did is we took the com the configuration changes into uh, source control, and we again empowered a developer to make changes necessary to the each config environments, and we picked. Uh, environment specific configuration from source control and we put it in the build package which was then pushed to the pro environment respectively. The other one preparing the build package we used Anscript and Enhance to do that and uh, like careless check-ins and integration issues were there so we set up so uh, cruise control dot net as a continuous integration server which do uh, a, a build on, on every night. So these are the values we gained like with every single change uh, quick round trips, like you, by by implementing testing automation, whenever there is an issue, we are getting it very very upfront, very early. Then avoid redundant manual efforts, automate it, roll out build more frequently, uh, more more quality deliverables for you, and finally you will be more release ready. Your release readiness will increase. You, you will be ready to do releases at any point of time. And I believe this is not an idea of a single person or uh, or, a, or a single. Uh, like a thought leader, it was a teamwork. Like together, uh, the team achieves more. There are several things uh, to go for. There are several things or points to go for automation. But you could die for one precious thing in this world, and that is time. You choose if you believe. So I believe. Like uh, last last year, I attended the session, and Venkat Subramani was talking about automation. He was telling like uh, ten years back, we were talking more about object oriented programming everywhere it was object oriented programming and now nobody talks about object oriented programming everybody talks about just programming so just like that now it is time uh, for automation and he says like uh, it's a time to automate things and you have to more talk about automation so i believe that was uh, true and we succeeded in it so uh, anyone can start practicing agile those who sustain the enthusiasm succeeds others fail that's my point of view you can uh, reach me at vinodpthman at gmail.com and you can uh, get me at Twitter at, at vinodpthman. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Uh, doc, do I have some time for questions or? Okay, okay, fine. So we are running out of time. I will be available outside. Uh, we can have chat and I will be available tomorrow as well. Thank you.